Welcome to our AFSL series. In today's video, we're going to discuss some tips for meeting your audit obligations as an AFSL holder. There are five important things to note when it comes to audit season. First up is the lodgement date. The lodgement date is the most important thing to know about your audit obligation. Knowing this date will help you to avoid potential breaches which are reportable to ASIC and late fees. Lodgement dates for AFSL holders differ. If you're a disclosing entity or a registered scheme, your lodgement date is within three months of the end of your financial year. If you are not a disclosing entity, your lodgement date is within four months of the end of your financial year. Any non-body corporates are required to lodge within two months of the end of your financial year. Step two is to get in contact with your auditor early. Early contact with your auditor can save you a lot of time and alert you to any issues well before your lodgement date. Your auditor will let you know the documentation they require. Essentially, they will be looking for documentation that demonstrates that compliance procedures have been implemented properly and carried out through the entire audit period. Be sure to start collating the documentation needed soon after the end of your financial year. Collating and updating this documentation can be time consuming, particularly in smaller businesses where there are fewer resources to dedicate to the audit process. Next up is to know what needs to be submitted to ASIC. Your auditor should know, but do you? AFSL holders are required to submit forms FS70 and 71. If you're a limited licensee, form FS76 is required. The FS70 is a profit and loss statement and balance sheet, which outlines your financial position and covers specific requirements for certain licensees. You need to attach your audited financial statements to the FS70 when you submit. The FS71 is the auditor's report and must be completed and signed by the auditor. Form FS76 is specifically for limited AFSLs and is not an audit but a compliance certificate. It includes a range of certifications in relation to the obligations of limited licensees. Form 388 only applies to some licensees. Be sure to check with your auditor if this one applies to you. Step 4. Review the final documents before you submit to ASIC. Before you submit, you must review all the documentation. Double check your forms to ensure they make sense and also align with your AFSL conditions and financial statements. Directors are ultimately responsible for the information which is submitted to ASIC, so it is imperative the detail is correct. You also risk being in breach if the information is wrong or has been input incorrectly. Don't forget that there have been changes made by ASIC to require that the financial reports of AFSL holders contain disclosures that are in line with the requirements of the Australian Accounting Standards Board. Depending on the scope of your licence authorisations, different levels of disclosure will apply. Last of all, you need to lodge your accounts online. The last step is to lodge your annual accounts online via the AFS licensee portal. ASIC's website has all the information you need to register for online access. Make sure you keep records of your lodgement and the documentation you submitted to ASIC. Record keeping is a legal requirement for all AFSL holders. If you have any questions about today's video, head over to our website where you can talk to a member of our team via our live chat service. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on the next video in our AFSL series.